While I was benchmarking for another video, I came across something strange that I cannot explain. And while we come across all kinds of weird computer behavior, this worries me a little bit. The hardware I'm using today is the DFI K6 PV3 Plus SuperSocket 7 motherboard with a modified AMD K6 3 Plus. I left the full level 2 cache active and clocked it at 550MHz with a voltage of 1.6 volts. There are also 128MB of main memory and the Matrox Millennium 2 installed. I use a USB keyboard with integrated touchpad because it helps me save some space on my desk. Other than that, there is nothing else worth mentioning. Here are the events that made me aware of something being wrong with my setup. While I was on my way recording footage for an upcoming video, I ran into an issue with system info and had to restart the PC. And then I got stuck in a boot loop. After the BIOS is done detecting the IDE drives, it just restarts. I know this behavior from the ASUS P55T2P4, which behaves exactly the same way when I leave the radio receiver from the keyboard in one of the USB ports. I just have to unplug the dongle for that specific portion of the boot process and the system continues. It always bugged me, but I didn't find a solution to this issue yet. So I went back to benchmarking for the upcoming content. I had to rerun Speedsys for some comparison. Hmm, wait a second. Something is different. Whoa, what was that? Is there something wrong with this graph? There is some extreme chitteriness going on on the left side. And yes, I do remember that the graph looked like this before. It bugged me when I saw the cache performance graphs look like that, but I ignored it as best as I could. And now it's gone. What happened? And then I noticed that I didn't reconnect the USB receiver of the keyboard. That day, instead of using my regular USB combo, I happened to be using PS2 peripherals. So long story short. When I connect the USB receiver of my keyboard, the chitter appears. Without the USB dongle connected, the lines in the graph are smooth. And the bad part about this is that it not only doesn't look nice, it also reduces the overall system performance. Let's have a look at the memory performance. The level 1 cache is over 100 megabytes per second slower when the USB dongle is connected. It is less significant for the level 2 cache, but even here, we see a reduction of 50 megabytes per second. And this continues for the level 3 cache and for the memory throughput as well. For more details, you can study this table. In most cases, you will see a reduction in performance. Ok, fine. Graphs and tables aside, can we notice a difference in real applications? That's the question. And the answer is yes, we can. The PC Player benchmark scored 33.6 points with a USB dongle connected. Rerunning the benchmark without anything connected to the USB ports improves the performance to now 34.4. Yes, that's right! When the USB receiver is plugged in, we lose between 2-3% in performance. Let's have a look at Quake. With the USB receiver connected, we get a result of 19.3 frames per second. And once we remove it, we improve to 19.8 frames per second. Again a 2-3% performance difference. Let's move on and have a look at system info. With the USB receiver we get a score of around 1344 points. But sometimes there are some huge drops and spikes. Sometimes we go down to about 380 points and as high as 6472 points. But that might just be a measuring glitch. Once I unplug the USB receiver, the score improves to 1375. Again an improvement of 2-3%. Also, the large drops and spikes are gone. You can immediately see the effect the USB device has on the performance when it is being connected and disconnected. Reproducible every single time. Ok, let's try something else, like a USB flash drive. Surprisingly, the flash drive does not affect the performance at all.
Okay, I have one more device, a wired USB keyboard. And wouldn't you know, the performance is affected again. So maybe input devices have an effect on the performance. Maybe a USB input device requires some extra CPU processing cycles and therefore there are less resources available to the remaining system. We are talking about the 2-3% here, but I find this quite strange. Let's move on to the final test that also has a graphical feedback. Let me try to unplug the USB receiver during the speed sys benchmark. That was too slow. This will require some practice. Ah, again too slow. Okay, now we're getting closer. But it is clearly visible how unplugging the USB receiver causes a huge dip in the cache speeds. Finally, I got it. A huge dip, then recovery and smooth cache performance for the rest of the test. This is all I could figure out for now. I guess I have to look further into this. Is it the modified CPU? I could test with an unmodified K63. Maybe it is the motherboard. I have also the ASUS P55T2P4, which showed some similar behavior with the boot loops when the USB receiver is connected. Or is it actually the USB breakout board? Now I also tested in Windows, but there the results were far less conclusive. The CPU-C results were not consistent and I don't want to say much about it. In PC Mark 2002, the memory score improves from 506 to 513, when there is no USB receiver connected. The CPU score remains unchanged. And this is it what I have right now on this topic. Did you experience something similar in the past? Or do you have an idea why we see this behavior when a USB input device is connected? If so, then let me know in the comments. Depending on the interest, I may have to make a few follow-up videos on this topic. If you don't want to miss this, subscribe to my channel and like the video if you enjoyed the content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.